This special meeting to order tonight is Monday, May 17th, 2021. It is 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the Council Chambers. Sheila, roll, roll call, please. What was your position? Now? Councilor Ungeyer. Uh, Chief or Lieutenant Colonel. Okay. She is here, but no. she's here, but she is not. She's here, Sheila. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Councilor Bosco. How many years? Councilor Sakala. She's not here tonight. She's not here. Okay. Councilor Crisati. Here. Here. Councilor Hemler. Here. Two now? Mayor Lovett. Here. Councilor Mengi. Here. Councilor Muller. Here. Councilor Riley. Here. That's Tonto. Yes. Yeah. Here. Director of State Parks. Here. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. That's 10 members present, one absent. Thank you, Sheila. I'm going to turn it over to town manager, but we're honored to have the Colonel of the Department of Environmental and Energy Protection, Colonel Chris Lewis, along with our Chief, Eric Fox, um, here tonight to talk about some very important things with the Scanic River. Uh, again, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. We're honored to have you here, Colonel. Again, thank you for coming here to Enfield tonight. Tom Thank Andrew. you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we very much appreciate the Colonel taking the time, and also he's going to be, and the Chief introducing some of his uh, fellow colleagues at DEEP um, who are going to address the Scanic River Park. You know, as you know, every year about this time, I mark the calendar. Um, this is how the seasons pass in town, various uh, challenges that arise, and one is always the Scanic River Park. We're fortunate to have the park, uh, but the unfortunate part of it is very small and there's very inadequate parking. So it is a constant effort for the town and the state to deal with that and yet keep the park open for local residents who want to use it for hiking and walking through uh, to enjoy the vista and the river, and also those who come from other areas who have more pro protracted uh, uh, dreams of staying there with their families and having lunches and picnics and that poses some real burdens and stress to the to the park itself I would like to thank the colonel uh, the chief for our first visit uh, when Colonel Lewis was sworn in last year he was gracious enough to come with his folks from deep to address our concerns um, what we learned from last year we did it a little later in the season so we figured we'd get a bit of a jump on it this year and start a couple weeks before Memorial Day thankfully the colonel and the chief had uh, collaborated earlier in the week, knowing the weather was going to be nice. We actually kicked off enhanced patrols by the police in deep this past weekend, I think, to great success so that we wouldn't let sort of the horse out of the barn uh, before we looked at it this year. Um, I will have to say I thank uh, for their input last year and every year. Last year, Donna Susak attended. Carol Hall, our state rep, is always very involved uh, and uh, responsive to her constituents with the park. And our former chief and counselor, Carl Sferraza, came last year. And with his many years' experience with the park, he was very instrumental as well in coming up with a, a different plan last year, which I think met with more success than we have ever had. Uh, with that, I think the colonel has some um, exciting news, but also some sobering news uh, as well about reality that have changed a little bit on the ground with the uh, expiration of some of the governor's executive orders. So again, the park will remain a challenge, but we wanted our residents and council to know that we give it our full attention. We're current, concerned about everybody being able to enjoy this, this asset in town for its intended use and to enjoy it during the summer months, whether you're from town or from area uh, around town to enjoy this beautiful gem. The current did an article a few years ago about little lost jewels, little secret treasures, and they listed the Scanic Park. It was a curse and a blessing <laughs> gave great accolades to the park but it brought a lot more people to come and enjoy it so with that i'm going to turn over the introduction to our uh chief and uh, he will then turn it over to colonel lewis thank you gentlemen good evening ladies and gentlemen thank you as always for the opportunity to join you words like collaboration and partnership are used so often they almost become hackneyed in the current era uh, but i would nevertheless open by referencing words like those two um, in, in describing the relationship that we've been able to forge with DEP and the ENCON Police Department. Uh, we recognize, as you recognize, that the town enjoys the benefit, but as Mr. Bromson referenced, sometimes the frustrations that go with having a state asset and a wonderful state asset within our community. Um, when you take calls from your constituents that express their frustration, because I do think that that's more often why they tend to call you, 
that information tends to go from you to me, and then I pick up the phone and speak to individuals like Colonel Lewis. So in an effort to short circuit that process and to give you an understanding as to where we are as we enter into the season, uh, it was our pleasure to invite two individuals. You will see Mr. Tom Tyler, who is the DEP Director of State Parks, who has joined us remotely. And then, of course, immediately to my left, as you heard a moment ago, uh, Colonel Chris Lewis, who's the commanding officer of the DEEP Environmental Conservation Police Department. I had the great fortune, um, and I, I certainly am not adverse to holding this over him if I ever need to, of having sat on Colonel Lewis's oral panel. Uh, the DEEP went through two rounds of hiring to try to find an appropriate individual to fill this position. And to their credit, after the first round of interviews, the uh, individual who was sort of the OIC from DEEP said, I just don't know that I'm necessarily feeling it. So there was a re-advertisement and there was a very strong feeling that uh, Colonel Lewis stood out from amongst his peers. I certainly was an advocate for him at that time as well. The Colonel joins us, joins us after a 20 one year career as the lieutenant colonel, the assistant chief, if you will, within the Alabama Department of uh, DEEP. He's been with us here in Connecticut for two years. And I believe what he's in a position to do, along with Mr. Tyler, is give you an understanding as to the DEEP resources that are available. Um, and I do think there is some good news there, tempered perhaps by an awareness that his jurisdiction is statewide. And when we're active, Squance Pond is active. And when we're active, Bigelow Hollow is active. And when we're active, Gay City is active. And Hammonasset and Rocky Neck are, are small cities unto themselves on Saturdays and Sundays. He will specifically be able to share with you one, I think, very significant stroke of good news in terms of his staffing. Uh, but there are some broader state concerns that you should be aware of that are beyond his and beyond my control in terms of uh, patronage to the park. With no further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you formally Colonel Chris Lewis and Mr. Tyler. Uh, thank right, you, thank, thank you, Chief. Chief. And I would just like to recognize two other invited guests who have come in. Uh, Carol Hall, whom I mentioned previously, our state rep, who has always been very involved in the, the concerns uh, raised at the park. And also Senator John Kissel, who is always at the meetings we hold out there at the park uh, in person. So I welcome them both and thank them for attending as well. Thank Colonel, you, sir. Colonel Lewis, welcome. Mr. Tyler, uh, sorry I didn't, rec I didn't realize you were calling in. Welcome as well. Again, we appreciate you coming to the town of Enfield and informing our residents. So thank you for both being here. Sir, thank you. you. the floor. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, like I said, uh, Chris Lewis, uh, Colonel Environmental Conservation Police. So um, Chief Fox reached out to me last year, um, and that kind of started this, uh, my education on, on the Pacific corner of the Scantic River State Park system that, that touches uh, the touches town of Enfield uh, had a lot of good conversations with uh, some uh, some neighboring uh, property owners and business owners around in the park last year which was very very helpful and enlightening um, you know so this year we, we really struggled over the over the past winter fall winter to come up with a new plan so what, what we're doing as far as environmental conservation police division um, but honestly, it's more really focused towards our shoreline parks because Hammond and Asset State Park turns into a, a 30,000 population city on a Saturday. Um, so that is our primary focus. But we, we have hired um, a core group of um, a, a good good cadre of, of, uh, of seasonal employees that they will be. Um, we're putting them right right now through a, like a mini police academy, if you will. We get. Um, worked in coordination with Post and the Commissioner of Despy to uh, come up with an approved course of training. Um, so when they complete this training this week, uh, our commissioner will be able to swear them in as a special conservation officer. They'll be able to enforce our park regulations, just like a regular full-time officer would. However, these will be unarmed, um, unarmed rangers, if you will, um, but they have a limited enforcement ability. So on top of just advising someone they can't do something, if someone continues to ignore educational efforts they can they can escalate it up to you know writing someone in a fraction if, if that's what the need comes to um, with that whole program with with doing what the need was up here and our limited staffing in this corner of the state um, we, we highlighted one all, one um, applicant that was from kind of nearby here so um, we're, he's going to be assigned to Scanic River um, his he works a full-time job elsewhere um, he's 
he's doing this because he, he believes in the mission of, of deep and protecting the environment so we um, we can't pay our part-timers much um, but so it's, he's also not in it for the money um, but, but he does have a passion for it um, he's gonna be assigned he, his schedule is so Saturdays pretty much eight to eight to four seventy three every Saturday he's committed um, we got Tuesday Wednesday and uh, Thursday committed then every Fridays and uh, Mondays alternate based off his uh, his primary work schedule so Sundays um, Sunday's not available to him but in addition to him we also have our traditional what we call um, SEOs or seasonal officers those are post certified officers um, armed police officers that they might work at another police department somewhere else or recent retired that we'll hire um, so we're, we're still in the process of bringing those on and we're hoping to have a couple more more in this northeast corner of the state that will be able to augment our, um, our our ranger patrol there in that area so i mean the, the goal we're looking for is is a more increased presence a more educational presence to um, nip nip any problems in the butt before they get out of control before they get carried away um, it whether we achieve it or not our desire is to have enough staffing there where we can control the parking lot because it's very small it gets full quick with also enough personnel or time to be able to 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 take our foot patrols down to the river down the trails contact people somewhere besides the parking lot is a is is an overreaching goal that we have um that's the goal we're setting with right now we have one person 100 percent of the time on a, on a schedule right now so to to get that whole goal i'm gonna have to slide some other people up but um that that's a lot easier goal to achieve than we had last year when i had um i was down a lot of people up here um also just for, for the town of enfield as a whole um we, we did hire two new officers full-time officers they just completed their fto um two new officers for um this we call it sector this part of the state so the northeast corner of the state we have two new officers that are working up this area um I like to say we're getting ahead, but um, you know, one foot forward, two steps back, or two steps forward. We we, we did have one uh, resigned, um, took a job opportunity with the um, no, with the federal agency. So we lost one good officer, but we got two new officers um, to replace that one. So um, they bring a lot of experience to the table. So um, both of them work a uh, long career at different agencies and. Uh, looking forward to them getting out here and, and learning the area so uh, like i said they, they just completed their their field training officer program in this area just a couple weeks ago so they're they're just now getting acclimated to to the bigelow hollows to the scanic rivers to the connecticut river um this will be the first summer working um we're anticipating another busy summer this year um hopefully not like last year it, it was great that everybody discovered our state parks again but we want them to rediscover them in a more moderate um orderly fashion um which, which would be great we we um i I'll, i don't take over the parts thing. i'll let uh, tom cover our our stats on all our visitations and records that we set last year I'm sorry. Was I called on? I'm, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. But I see the, the, the chief uh, not, not, nodding the signal to me. I appreciate that. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, uh, I'm uh, Tom Tyler. I'm the director of Connecticut State Parks, and I appreciate uh, uh, the time and, and and meeting with you all on it. And as the uh, as the chief said earlier, uh, Chief Fox said earlier that uh, you know uh, we 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 use those terms, you know, uh, collaboration, you know, uh, widely. But I I really do genuinely appreciate the. Uh, uh, the collaboration that we've had over so many years. I, I'm tr trying to count the number of meetings I've had out uh, uh, out at the park with uh, Senator Kissel and, and others of you in attendance. I certainly appreciate uh, Senator Kissel and Representative Hall's uh, focus um, on the issue. And, and it's it's absolutely a, a challenge, as we as we all know. Uh, you know, Scantic River, po the Powder Hollow area has been has been discovered, as as have many many uh, kind of similarly situated uh, areas around the state that. You know, are are an attraction for folks. It's a, an opportunity to get you know in or near the water in a nice shady spot. Um, but it's just not a, a facility that, uh, as you all you know well know, that's uh, uh, you know prepared you know in terms of uh, you know parking and facilities to to support the the number of people who are who are interested. So uh, as the, the the colonel hinted at, we you know we are we are up significantly in, in our uh, park attendance with the. Uh, uh, coinciding with the the pandemic, where we're up over 20% uh, year over year attendance, um, and 
last spring compared to the previous spring, we were probably up about a hundred percent increase uh, year over year. So you know we we're 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 gearing up for another for another season. Um, uh, what we really don't know yet is you know will will this year be another uh, record breaking year like last year? Now that so many more people have discovered uh, state parks, or will uh, getting back to normal and kids sports and family vacations and all those things will that uh, uh, you know, tamp tamp down our overall you know attendance numbers, and uh, my my crystal ball is not clear enough to to, to make that uh, final prediction. But uh, we're uh, we're we're gearing up for uh, as well as we can for a uh, uh, for another busy season. And I think what we all recognize is, regardless of kind of overall what the pressures are on our um, on our system, uh, I think we all know that Scantic River and Potter Hollow will be will be an attractive spot that continues to bring in um, uh, crowds that uh, that will over overtax uh, the ability. So certainly the the enforcement is an important uh, key on uh, on that. And just for a little bit of background about our, our organization, so folks kind of know where we're coming from. Uh, so uh, the Colonel and I both work for DEEP. Um, uh, so the State Park and for uh, State Parks uh, and Public Outreach Division, we manage uh, the uh, recreational aspects of the um, 110 state parks, 32 state forests, about a quarter of a million uh, acres, uh, a little over 7% of the state of Connecticut. Uh, we have a responsibility for for this area um, of, of our, the state lands it is managed out of what we refer to as the uh, Shinipset State Forest Unit. Uh, a gentleman named Mark Blazejack is the park supervisor for the area that, in, that stretches from uh, really from the Connecticut River all the way out to uh, to Bigelow Hollow and, and Union. So he's got a big uh, swath of, of property that he's responsible for. But as the Colonel indicated, it's he and his staff that have uh, the law enforcement responsibility on the, the state lands under DEP's control. Um, our division has, um, you know, it will have the other aspects of, of managing the property in terms of um, you know, in this case, you know, litter pickup and 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 uh, that kind of supervision of the property. So uh, Mark is uh, looking to to gear up for the summer and bring on as many employees as he can. I'm sure you know. The, I'm sure both the, both your town and uh, employers across the state are are struggling to bring on uh, the, the summer employees that we need to 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 get our jobs done. Uh, but we're 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 looking to bring bring on the folks that we need to uh, support the support the parks in in the area. And, and Mark always does a uh, uh, a great job. So uh, I'll leave it there. We're happy to answer uh, any questions, but just again, appreciate uh, appreciate everybody's uh, uh, time, uh, time and, and attention. attention. Mr. Tyler, thank you. Uh, Chief? So I think what you've heard uh, in particular, uh, well, from, from both speakers, I think what you've heard is uh, an increased presence of the DEP to have a body physically on grounds at the Scantic which we, and they've been very good in the past, but they haven't had the degree of resources that they've now described for you. Is it necessarily this individual in that uniform who's going to be there? No, that's not what's been described for you, but the equivalent of a ranger, if you will, uh, a, a, an individual that's gone through a mini academy, to use the Colonel's phrase, uh, and not to get too far down into the weeds, but I'm just trying to paint the picture for you. This will be an individual that will have the ability to enforce park regulations to the infraction level inside the facility. And when I spoke to the colonel earlier, and he shared with me all day on Saturday from now till the end of the season, um, I, I was I was thrilled when I heard that. Now he didn't say Saturday and Sunday, but he said all day Saturday, which we have not had before. And he's and then for added bonus fun, he gave you some other days during the week as well, in addition to our ability to have the occasional NCON patrol officer swing by and certainly to respond when we need to. Having said all of that, please also know that your Enfield Police Department, um, under your direction and Mr. Bronson's specific tutelage, we've begun our staffing, if you will, our side, their side of the line uh, as of this weekend, and we'll be pushing that out forward. I believe an email was actually sent to you earlier today that gave you a cost out as well. This is what we're looking at in town to make sure that we can address the parking issues on our side of the line. So up to this point, what I hope you have heard thus far is all the good stuff. It is necessary to share with you one item that is beyond the control of Mr. Tyler and beyond the Colonel, um, and that has to do with the ability to allow walk-ins and the expiration of the governor's executive order. Colonel, are you in a position to describe that? 
Um, yeah, so our executive order last year where we could prohibit walk-ins at any of our state parks once the reached capacity, that was in the governor's executive orders on, on some of the early COVID-19 uh, um, regulations. That expired last end of last year. Um, some executive orders were renewed. That was not one of them. And then furthermore, as we look forward into the near future, May 19th, you know, um, if we did have the executive order today, it, it would be it would be gone this week. So we're anticipating, um, you know, going forward, all our all our parks and forests will be operating like they were prior to COVID, where we were not allowed to restrict walk ins. Um, we can control the parking lot. It's a small parking lot. Um, once that's full, we'll close the parking lot, um, make an announcement that the park is full to capacity. Um, and we managed it from there. Um, but if someone parks, and I'll say the term legally, somewhere else and wants to hike it a mile down there, we, we don't prohibit them to walk into the park. Um, we don't encourage it when they come by and the park's full. To, we, we're, not a, we're not a kiosk of entry service telling them where to go park at. Um, basically, our response at that point at Scantic or any park is, you know, it's not our responsibility. The park, the park is full, the gate's closed. You can't park here. You can't park on the road. It's even going to have an asset, right? Yeah. <laughs> and what I will say, Mr. Mayor, last year it worked out extremely well. We introduced uh, sign boards at critical um, junctures uh, what, as you came off the main thoroughfares to the park, uh, saying the park was closed. That was effective. We will have our uh, offices there on Saturdays and Sundays. In addition, as the colonel said, they will notice when the park lot is closed they will again post on their site hopefully the word would get out i think it'll be a little more challenging but there all obviously becomes a distance which people are not going to be willing to walk um to park um safely to get to the park so i think with his enhanced personnel and our vigilance with our officers together with what we implemented next year i think we'll stay on top of it again we started early and the, the message will be out there so I, I think we're in as good a shape as we can uh, be at this juncture. Anything else before we open up the questions? No, sir. Councilor Sparaza, then Deputy Mayor Suzak. Uh, Colonel Lewis, thank you for coming. Um, this is a problem that I dealt with for many years when I was the chief. And, you know, I can't tell you how happy I am to hear that we're going to have that ranger on Saturdays because, you know, um, despite so many people trying to fix the problem down there. On Monday morning, our residents go down there and the place is trashed. Um, but despite over the years meetings with Mr. Tyler and Senator Kissel and Representative Hall, we all tried our best to do what we could. But in the end, no matter how many signs we put up, um, there was no enforcement. And in the end, without a body there and i'm okay that it's a ranger and they can do infractions it's just somebody needs to be there and the fact that um the state's gonna pay for that is appropriate because it's a state park um, i wish you could do sunday but i'm not going to complain about it because for years we had nothing and now at least we have half a day um, but i really think that on the days your rangers are there, we won't have the problems that we have had in past years. And I, and I understand that over the years, I know that the commissioners and Mr. Tyler always wanted to do this, but you were restricted by economic uh, restraints. And now this year it's happening. It's good for us, at least it's a start. But um, that was the one piece that we would talk round and round and round about putting the sign and this and that. But now that there's a presence there that can issue the infraction tickets, um, I think that's, that's wonderful. So I'm very glad to hear it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Susak. Yeah, I'm the person who gets all the calls. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the problem is, is it is a passive recreation park and the parking is designed to the use of the park. What I have a problem with is when people are allowed to have large drop-offs and then are redirected to our town park parking lots that they can use for that, and then the baseball people come and they can't park there. And I was really happy to, to hear you say that they can walk in, but we're not there. We're not the greeting committee to send them to where they can park. 
And also, you know, we actually have, we have what, Linear East, Linear West, we have Scantic, and we have Linear South. I don't know if there's Linear North or whatever, but there's a lot of other parks that people can actually go to to enjoy that are state parks when that parking lot is full. So I wouldn't be so opposed to people being redirected to another, you know, state park that has parking available, but I'm a little opposed to directing to our town parks where the parking is specific for that use. And um, as long as we have our signs up, you know, no parking. We don't want to create a dangerous situation down there. And I don't want, you know, at the barn that she can't run her business because people have over, you know, run that business. And um, everybody can enjoy it. And um, I think it is a beautiful park, and it is wonderful to have that river. So um, I think we're off to a really good start, and hopefully I won't get any phone calls. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The other question, curious, Colonel, and this is more probably more to a long term. I'm hearing you when you use the word education. Is there a way, so as we have a permanent, if, if even if it's somewhat permanent ranger, to start maybe as you do an education to some young people who may volunteer from the colleges that we can maybe use next summer as a program to get into you know forestry and the DEP is an opportunity to connect with either the high school or or the or the ACC college where. You know, our young people have, you know, again, they've done all the work, you know, and all the all the, uh, the establishment in town. Why not? I mean, why, just an idea. Why don't we connect educational-wise and maybe volunteers as a credit for either the high school, you know, inter I hate to say it, almost interns where, you know, for co whatever, the ACC or our high school. So it's as you're, you're building your staff, you again, you get the pipeline maybe to a, you know, to a younger you know, again, getting them out into the environment. And so, and I always look at this, and I, I know I'm going to take heat for this by saying it, but I always look at this as a good problem to have, right? I mean, I understand when, you know, the business that owns there and, and people are firing up their kibachis and, but man, we want people outside, but the park just wasn't built to, for what people want to use the park for. So, you know, I, I get it, right? So we're sort of, we want people outside, but then, you know, well, again, here they kind of overuse, but if they went to Hammond Acid, it's perfect. You know, you get the ocean, you get all that, all that, here it's not not the same thing but i'm just saying i'll stop talking is that maybe it's an opportunity to sort of look as sort of a start asking some young people you see walking through because i'm sure you would have interest from either our high school students or and or our, our college kids yeah um so we just recently did that um tom you want to explain you you had more people involved in in our virtual career fair we just did um, yeah, yeah, we've had a, uh, an exciting program with uh, uh, through the University of uh, uh, Connecticut, the uh, uh, kind of a virtual job shadow opportunity. We're always looking for opportunities like that, but uh, you know, but certainly, you know, that kind of pipeline of you know bringing people in, whether it's a uh, we, we actually focus more on you know a seasonal you know kind of entry position as opposed to uh, internships, uh, but you know bringing you know bringing young folks in. Um, having them exposed to, you know, work in the parks, whether it's, you know, working for the parks division um, and being exposed to the, the environmental conservation police division, if that's something that interests them and consider to kind of pull them into, uh, you know, next year's recruit class for the, uh, uh, for the, for the, the Colonel's Ranger program. Um, you know, we're always looking to, to, to bring, bring folks on to, um, to, 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 for for them to you know kind of try us on and see if it's a uh, a career or at least a, uh, a a seasonal job they'd like to pursue. So we're always open to those uh, collaborations and happy to talk more about whether there's opportunities through either the high school or the uh, as Nuntunk or other uh, facilities there where we could uh, um, you know work on that recruiting. Uh, we'd be happy to participate in that. Yeah, if, if you guys wouldn't mind sending me, your, we'd love to. I'd love to hook you up with. I think it's a great opportunity and. Again, as you're building your team, and why not start with the younger folks? And you know, I think it's yeah. I, I think that's our future. We that's the first time I ever done a virtual job shadow. I think maybe Tom same here. I, I've done job fairs before, but that was um, it was it was the first time we done that. So we hit. I, I lost track of the number of schools that, right. that that joined us, and we got such demand. We we did an encore performance in the middle middle of the evening for for students where their class schedules wouldn't work. Um, That's great. And I that mean, I was a short. Be great for up here because, again, yeah. we are different from the rest of the state. I mean, not simply from our location. If we have folks who understand the area, they won't be sending them to you know, all their parks in town because they don't know oh, that park's already packed or whatever. And, and again, it helps you, but you're not, you know, when you're looking to hire. So maybe you don't have the money to hire someone full time, but 
you got a young person in and it's a seasonal job so they're getting paid which is even better than an internship and yeah. the real job and i can guarantee you most of the young people have done done the the, the what do you call it the the splash thing they do every year or they you know with the canoeing or whatever it is i apologize i'm using spring, wrong splash. Word. spring splash that's it right so they you know, probably know that river better than most people <laughs> so i would mean, be great i'd be more than willing to you know if you wanted to send me an email i'd love to see us develop that for next year because i'm sure we'd find a lot of young folks in this area that'd love to do it yeah um we yeah one of our brothers follow up with you on that um we yeah it'd be good to get follow the local schools and community college and colleges up, up in this area and we can we, we we know the template it works so we, we can we can roll it out pretty cool. easy i think great we Appreciate it. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions or comments? I do. Uh, this part, uh, sorry, sir, it's it's not a uh, public communication. You have to wait to the regular meeting. Okay. So. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Tyler. Thank you, Colonel. We appreciate you uh, coming, making a preemptive strike, and I'm sure we'll be working and talking to you uh, throughout the summer. Hopefully, in a in a good way. Yes, so thank you. Thank just you. in closing, either one of you, anything, just to make sure you have the floor. If anything closes, first of all, we thank you very much for coming, Denfield. We, again, it is a partnership, and I know you folks have been very, very collaborative, and it makes a big difference for us up here, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. It's our pleasure. That's good. Thank, thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Have a good, have evening. good evening. Thank you. Two. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Chief, you stay. Please. <laughs> Do you want to go? You can hand these. Yeah, they, yeah. they can start. Okay. But maybe that's your memo. Yep. Thank you, Senator. Thank, Thank you, Carol. Carol. Good night. That was Carl. He's on the Scenic River, whatever. So, uh, sorry. Uh, Reverse order. Um, so we, we are now uh, Moody, but that's so less public. Important. We will be back at seven. We are going to go into executive session. Um, Paul, just let me know.
getting there. Okay, just let me know. There we go. Thank you, Paul. Uh, General Pug, so we, uh, we will start our meeting. We apologize for running late. We will start in two minutes. Uh, the regular meeting will be starting shortly. Whichever's working. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Enfield Town Council. We apologize, it is 7:22, Monday, May 17th, 2021. Um, prayer, Councillor Ungar, please. Lord, we thank you for your great love and mercy over our lives. We ask you to bless our combined efforts to succeed in Enfield. May excellence, not perfection, drive our servitude. We ask that your face would shine on us that you would open the right doors for our lives, our loved ones, and our community. Close the wrong doors and protect us from those who seek to hinder and divide. Establish the work of our hands and bring to fulfillment all that you have given us to do in these days ahead. Make our footprints, our footsteps firm, straight, and purposeful. We need your wisdom and understanding in all our ways. Give us strength to do your will with the help of your mighty hand. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Pledge of, allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Ungar? I'm here. Councilor Bosco? Here. Mayor, is Councilor Sakala still absent? Yes, yeah, she won't be here tonight. Okay, thank you. Councilor Crisotti? Here. Councilor Hemler? Here. Mayor Ludwig? Here. Councilor Mangini? Here. Councilor Muller? Here. Councilor Riley? Here. Councilor Supraza? Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Here. That's 10 members present, one absent. 
Thank you, Sheila. Uh, item number four, the fire evacuation announcement. In case of fire, we have doors at the back of the town council chambers. We orderly go left or right out the doors to the town, to the parking lot. Or we have doors to our left and to some folks right. We go through those doors to the first doors out in the hall, down the stairs and out in the parking lot in case of a fire. Um, item five, minutes of the preceding meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the special meeting, uh, excuse me, the special meeting of May 3rd, 2021 by Deputy Mayor Suzak? Second. Seconded by Councilor Riley. Is there any additions, deletions or corrections? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions, 10 in favor, Sheila, zero against, no abstentions. Do I have a, approval for the regular uh, minutes for the regular meeting of May 3rd, 2021? So moved. By Councilor Riley, seconded by Councilor Muller. Is there any corrections, additions or deletions? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions, 10 in favor, zero against, Sheila. Special guest item six, we have none. We already had our six o'clock meeting. Uh, item seven, public communications. We have none. We move on to. I, was sitting in the hall. Huh? Did that guy want to speak? Is he? Well, I'm sorry. Let him in. Yeah. Yeah. You guys should have told him to come in for the regular meeting. We just started the regular. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, one of you guys, you're out there, right? Hey, come on in. Sorry, folks. We actually. Carl, sorry, sir. I, you're right there. You're, you have the right, come right up. Okay. Welcome. Uh, just make sure the button is red. Name and address for the record, and welcome, that sir. Should be glowing. I just press the. There you go. Welcome. Thank you. You have the floor. Oh, uh, my name is Carl Sampson. Been in Enfield for about 40 years. Uh, my wife's been, uh, I think, in town about 50 years. I, uh, I was here earlier, I wanted to listen to the deep presentation. Um, I'm here representing the Scanic River Watershed Association. I'm the current president. Uh, we're an advocacy group for the river. Um, we were established in 1972 and I mean way before my time, but uh, you know, we're advocates for the river and uh, we spend a lot of time there. Um, our, our motto is we speak for the river. Uh, we do some we do water testing we're constantly on on the river you know uh paddling and hiking and doing a lot of trail maintenance always picking up litter unfortunately um i heard some good things from um, colonel lewis there i i talked to him after so i kind of explained who i was and i just wanted to say that uh our group is you know an asset for for the these town parks and we would be glad to help out you know anywhere we can uh we have about 10 people on the uh on the board we have monthly meetings and we have projects we do run the the spring splash which we had to cancel the last two years it's our, our major fundraiser we also have some fundraisers uh and other times of the year i think we're we're going to have a we call it a moonlight paddle uh, on the Somerville Pond in uh, August. So uh, I just wanted to, to, you know, meet the town council and meet the, the deep guy. Uh, I've spoken to some of his officers and his um, uh, people that are seasonal workers and bring certain things to, to their attention. Uh, you know, large trees down. Uh, we've come across some um, animals that need to be taken care of. Uh, last year we helped uh, extinguish a, a ground fire. Somebody had a fire out on the trails. An officer happened to be there and I, I went and got him. So uh, I just wanted to you know, kind of present myself, let the let you folks know that we're, we're, we're an asset. We're, we like to help the town parks. I'm in one of the four parks every single day with, with one of my dogs. I was, I was at uh, the linear west today um, and and the Bailey Road one so um, I'm uh, you know dedicated to keep these parks as you know uh, an asset that they are and you know like everybody was talking about the summertime is coming and we all know what what happens and I talked to officer uh, Lewis about some of the things and was you know glad to hear some of the things he was saying so um, 
Uh, anybody got any questions about the association? No, this, this, is, this is not a question and answer, just oh. public communications. But okay. maybe some counselors will certainly afterwards, uh, you know, Carl, I'll forward your email to everyone if they have any questions. Yeah. Okay. We did um, write a letter of support for the rail trail. I, I CC'd you guys. Um, you know, we, we, we support that. We'd like to see that. So. Hey, you have uh, you still have two minutes left. Anything you'd like to say? It's your time. No, I, I'm all set. Thank you for hanging in here. Sorry, I didn't realize you're in the hall. We would have went out and got you. We apologize. Okay, that's no problem. Yeah. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you. I'll see you see you around the neighborhood. Yes, yeah, see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for no recognizing. Appreciate it. So we move on to item eight: council communications. Any council have a communication? Councilor Hamler, then Councilor Mangini. Oh, I wish he had stayed. Um, we should. Want to get him? Say, so yeah. If you want to stay any, go ahead. Well, well you can. Okay. Oh, All right. You want um, to hold on? Uh, last, last. You can, you can hold your, I'll go Council Mangini first, then you. Okay. Council Mangini, go right ahead. I just wanted to um, congratulate Claire Hall, ERFC program. She was recognized by the Surprise Squad, Channel 3 Surprise Squad, this morning, so not on the news, uh, for her uh, good work, um, you know, as an educator, and also um, helping, you know, through the COVID crisis, care for children and provide accommodations for them. So um, thank you, Claire Hall, for your dedication and hard work. I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Bosco. Well, you know, we're seeing if we can get the, she had a question, so if he comes back, he can send me. Okay. Yeah. Um, through to Mayor and Town Manager, uh, I was driving down Route 5 in front of the cemetery here, across from Hathaway. There's a big garbage bag that must have fell off of someone's truck, and there's trash thrown all over the, the front of the cemetery. And the next thing, and, and this one, this really bothers me a little bit, uh, it's been probably four months now, and I have maybe more. Actually, it's been a lot more, but since I was promised an answer, is I haven't heard nothing about the industrial park. And, um, you know, it's like I, I, I held something up only to prove a point to get some attention, and I still haven't heard nothing about it. And we, we really need to look into this and find some answers with it because we have some valuable land that's just going a waste and uh, you know I, I, I want some answers and I, now I'm getting a little aggravated and frustrated so um, so uh, I, I, uh, I flew me to tell me I'm sure we can go forward to Lori okay yep Thank you. Councilor Hamler, we'll just, we'll give, I'll give you his email, so go ahead. Okay, yeah, no problem. Um, so last week was the National Day of Prayer. It was uh, a really incredible service, and I appreciated everybody that was there. And um, just want to repeat again that uh, the parade is coming up. It's going to be an exciting day in Enfield. So it's Sunday, May 30th, 1 p.m., starts up at AOLA. And um, what I wanted to ask Carl was uh, he, he should, uh, whenever he has fundraisers, he should send them to us so we could announce it and, if possible, you know, put it out on the manager's report. And uh, I think it sounds like a great, I didn't even know it existed. It sounds like a great organization. And I bet you there's a lot more people who would be interested in participating, not, or, or, you know, with fundraisers and with maybe helping out. So it sounds pretty email. exciting. Yep. Uh, so, Council, since you did Councilor Riley, then Councilor Ungar. Okay, so if you were wondering, the Scantic River Watershed Association has a Facebook page and they have a website. It's srwa.org and you can go there. Um, it's not 100% up to date right now, but you can go there um, and it'll have like their email and things like that and it'll tell you what they do and what they're about and um, if you email them they will definitely um, get back to you um, and you guys all know um, Mike Emmons he's on their board with them so if you want to reach out to him too you can reach out to him but that's all. Councilor Ungar and Councilor Muller and Councilor Crisati then Deputy Mayor Suda. 
I just wanted to say I also attended the National Day of Prayer on May 6th. That was he held here on our beautiful town green. We had a great turnout, lots of people. The music was wonderful. And I want to thank New Day for sponsoring it. And uh, their prayer covered about everything. So that was really nice. So thank you. Councilor Muller? There's Councilor three Brown. Rotarians here, uh, President Mangini, Lori Ungeyer, and myself. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Melissa Kalpeska and Morgan Ludwig on receiving the Rotary Scholarship. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Councilor Krasai. Well, congratulations. That's, Chip that's, off the old that's, block. That's awesome. Uh, I was waiting for uh, Charlotte Riley to, to mention uh, coming up, the first reader ceremony, May 24th. Uh, it's going to be held at Asdanta Community College. I have to say that last week when we got together and we had to fill the bags with the books and the pencils and the medals, uh, we had a pretty good uh, assembly line going, and uh, I clocked on my watch. I think I, I think I walked the assembly line like two miles, so that was, that was a good workout. Uh, I also uh, happy to announce and thank you to the town of uh, Enfield for the use of the facilities and, and everybody that's involved that our uh, Enfield Star Special Olympics program is up and running. Uh, so all the athletes are, they have smiles from here to here, uh, you know, back in the pool swimming uh, over at the Annex and over at the Annex uh, track and field. And happy to announce that the summer state games are going to be held at Fairfield University. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, action and activities that are happening around town. Well, I'm, I'm happy and proud to state that. Uh, uh, for those uh, Special Olympic athletes, uh, their programs are back in action. So we're really uh, happy. And thank you once again to the town. Uh, we asked permission to start you know, training and open arms. We're following uh, COVID protocols still, and, uh, and everything's really working out well. So thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Suzak, then. So Deputy Mayor Suzak, then Council Riley. Okay. Well, first of all, since Bob, you remind me of the annex pool. We still haven't had our presentation. And we can make Jeff keep it to 10 minutes, okay? Tell him you can't go over and over again about the things that, you know, he's really impressed about what we do because it's a, it's a really great presentation. And um, also, um, for the Rails to Trails, um, um, Carol Hall and um, John and Mike and I will be there. Also, we will have a guest speaker for the Trails Conservancy, and that'll be at 6.30 at Enfield High School Auditorium on the 24th. A lot of things going on on the 24th. And I also did visit the Triano facility, and I want to thank you know, Mr. Triano for being very gracious and showing us everything that he is doing and understanding everything. And I, I have a really good understanding of what's going on. I am still a very big proponent of the trail. And I think we, we want everything that's best for Enfield and we all have to figure out how we do it. So um, with that, and also I would like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move items A1 through A3 B1 through B5, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, and N to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Motion made to suspend a rule, seconded by Councilor Muller. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstention? Ten in, ten in favor, zero against? All set. Councilor Riley? So I just wanted to add, going off of um, what Bob said, um, First Readers is having their drive-through ceremony next Monday, the 24th. Um, it'll be in three waves. It'll be at 5.30, 6.30, and 7.30. Um, so please only come for your wave and don't show up any more than 15 minutes before. Um, be aware of pedestrians um, and be patient because we've never done this before in a drive-through fashion. Um, so we're all, you know, we're gonna give it our best effort Watch for people in orange shirts. They'll help direct you. Um, I wanted to thank you know Bob for coming to help out, and uh, Walter Krizel came, Jonathan LeBlanc came, um, uh, librarian Kristen Raish came, and um, 
the literary arts, um, Adrian Snow came and they all helped um, put the bags together. Um, it took me about four days to write out all of the certificates for all the students and I am thrilled to say that we certified over 300 students as first readers and about half of that are going to come. So I wanted to say congratulations, keep up the good work, keep reading and uh, enjoying and we'll see you on Monday. Awesome. Anyone else? Hearing none, uh, moving on to item nine, town manager report. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. Um, and I will pass on the request um, to me. And Joe, I have passed that request on, but the buck stops here and I'll make sure that we have an answer for next time. I don't like to hear those kind of comments. So we'll address it. Um, and to Donna's point, we have had, unfortunately, to move um, the presentation on the annex pool because as you know we've had some incredible guest speakers tonight included I want to uh, endorse for people to watch our special meeting from 6 to 7 the colonel of the Connecticut DEP on his efforts at the Scanic River Park very encouraging and he was a, uh, a great gentleman to come and also Mr. Tom Tyler who's in charge of the state park system and you know not too far back we had the speaker of the house our bond council come and our next meeting June 1st or excuse me the June meeting the first meeting in June. We're going to have the uh, Deputy Commissioner of DOT, Gary Ucolito, to address the rails to trails. Um, so I think we do. We're very fortunate to have some very high town officials that come to Enfield uh, to share um, their efforts with us uh, due to the concerns of council and our residents. We're fortunate that they're so anxious to come and, and, and help us and come in person. So I thank them again. Um, at the next meeting, I'll tell you that we've had a lot. We had a deadline of May 12th for questions and comments on the rails and trails uh, option and the freight line. Um, I sent those to the deputy commissioner as I've let the council know. We had over 52. Um, we compiled them. Lori Whitman, uh, we sent it today to the commissioner, and he said, you know, it's going to take their staff some time. He's not going to have answers to all those questions when he comes to the first meeting in June, but he understands from the tenor of the questions and uh, council's communications what the main themes are, so he'll be able to address those. And he said staff at DOT will look at those questions and get his answers, um, at, you know, at a future time. Um, I would just like to also remind everybody that the uh, Enfield Farmers Market will have its uh, opening day, Sunday, June 6th, 10 to 2 on the town green. A lot of outstanding vendors coming back. We're going to have music, so please, everybody, come. I know a lot of council people come, a lot of our residents come, and a lot of our uh, I see a lot of our employees and staff come as well. So it's going to be really, really nice this summer, especially with the easing of restrictions. It really will be joyous to have everybody together. Um, and I think that's it for my any, report. Any questions for the town manager? Chris, just a quick question, town manager. I know we're, we're, so we expect to have the presentations on the three referendums, the second meeting in June or the first meeting in July? We'll look, we sent some dates out and there was some back and forth and we'll look at that and it'll be at one of the meetings. Because everyone, just so everyone knows, you gotta be prepared. We will have, even though we only have one meeting in July and one meeting in August, we will have to have a public hearing in August, so everyone's going to make sure that uh, we don't know the date yet, but I want to give everyone a heads up. It's going to be, you know, we want everyone to be able to come and speak on the referendums. They'll give us ideas. And again, remember, the vote will be the first meeting in September, whatever goes to ballot in November. So that's just a little heads up on timing. And uh, you know, we're I know we've kind of had the roofs. We've had a little bit of presentation, so, you know, but I know we're going to want to have all three. And then, so again, it's a man, it's on your manager webpage so people can see it all summer, can develop their questions. It can certainly talk to any counselor if they want to. And, um, but we will have a public hearing in August just so everyone knows so you're prepared. Quick question. Yep. When's the, what time's the farmer's market? Uh, every Sunday, 10 to two. 10 to two. Thank you. Uh, hearing no other questions, our town attorney report. Welcome attorney Townberg. Yes, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and member, uh, members of the council. Just a real quick update with regard to the COVID uh, executive orders. In two days, the remaining 50% of the 100 executive orders are set to expire. And three days ago, May 13, uh, the legislature passed an extension of the governor's uh, executive order powers for uh, up until July 20 with a caveat. Any new executive orders that issue or get extended may be overridden by the legislature. 
Uh, so we're all waiting. Uh, the way it's happened as these have been extended uh, during the height of the pandemic is as they were about to expire, usually the day before they're going to expire, a new extension would come out or a limitation. And so we're waiting for uh, May 19 to find what is going to be extended and what is not. We heard today there was an announcement that May 19 new mask rules will issue and they reported uh, that there will no longer be a mask requirement outdoors and uh, indoors. If you're vaccinated, it won't you won't be required to wear a mask, but if you're unvaccinated, uh, you'll still continue to have to wear a mask. And there are other sector rules. Uh, also, we're uh, being told that most of the business restrictions will end May 19. So unless they're extended, they will expire. Uh, we'll uh, be following this closely May 20 and report at the next meeting. Freedom, see huh? it on the news. Freedom. So, yes. Sorry, quite, though, so technically, right, so we're still in a declaration of emergency in town, aren't we? We are, and we will remain in that uh, emergency status until July 20 now. So okay, so it, it coincides. Okay, that's that was my question. Sorry, you answered. Okay, so it coincides with them extending it. Okay. Right. So yep. the emergency has been extended by the legislature until July 20. Certain of the uh, uh, executive orders will remain in effect after May 20. We'll find out on May 20 which of those will remain. But whereas we had at one point 102 executive orders, now we're down around 50. Most of those are going to expire in two days. Okay. Any questions for the town attorney? Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to 11 uh, reports of any special committees. No. Hearing none, we move on to item 12, old business. Again, uh, the, the item A remains on the table. Item 13, new business, A, consent agenda, B, appointments, C, appointments, and D, appointments remains on the table. Item 14, uh, excuse me, item, four, uh, item 14, items for discussion. A, 1, 2, and 3, the consent agenda has been moved to, mis been moved to miscellaneous. B, items 1 through 5 been moved to miscellaneous. Item C, appointments for the town manager, council approved, there are none. Item D, appointments, P and Z, commission appointed, council approved, there are none. E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, and N, and then move the miscellaneous. We move to item 15, miscellaneous. And we have the first item, item A, the consent agenda. Uh, um, items A, one, two, and three. Uh, request to transfer funds for the historic preservation of 7500 resolution to authorize carry forward of unspent funds for historic documents preservation funds and resolution of changing rate of pay do i have a motion to approve items a one two and three Double. by second. councilor Mahler, seconded by councilor mangini is there any discussion on consent agenda hearing none by show hands all those in favor opposed abstentions sheila 10 in favor zero against all three items pass we move on to item B1, uh, reappointment. Sorry, one second, I gotta get my papers together. I apologize. Um, so item uh, item B1, Enfield Culture Arts, reappointment of Samantha Nolan uh, is expired on 531 2021 Do I have a nomination? Samantha Nolan. Uh, made by Councilor Muller, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Do I have a motion to close? Nominated by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Second. Seconded by Councilor Muller. All those in favor of closing nominations by show of hands. Opposed abstentions. Ten in favor, zero against. Uh, Sheila, closing nominations. Is there any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Undyer. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisotti. Four. Councilor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Samantha Nolan. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sufraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Samantha Nolan. It's 10 in favor, none against, against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item 2, B2 under miscellaneous, Enfield Culture Arts. Uh, term of uh, a reappointment, uh, term of office of Donna Amre expires on 531-21. Do I have a, a nomination? Yes. Donna uh, Amre. Second. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Clo motion to close nominations. Deputy Mayor Second. Suzak, second by Councilor Muller. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands. Opposed, abstention. That's 10 in favor, zero against of closing nominations. Any discussion on the main motion? Hear it on roll call, please. Councilor Andreyer. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisotti. 
Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Donna Humring. Councilor Lillard. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sprouser. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Donna Hamry. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstention. Thank you, Sheila. Item 3B3 under, miscellane uh, under miscellaneous uh, off a reappointment or the term of office of Emily McIntosh expires on 531-21. Do I have a nomination, please? Yes, Emily McIntosh. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Mangini. Okay. Do I have a motion to close nominations? Mm -hmm. By Councilor Ungar, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands. Opposed abstentions. That's 10 in favor, zero against of closing nominations. Any discussion on the main motion? Hearing, no, hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Unger. Emily McIntosh. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Emily McIntosh. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sofraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Souza. Emily McIntosh. And in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item B4, uh, uh, under miscellaneous, Library Board of Trustees. <laughs> the term of Yvonne Wollenberg expires on 12, actually expired on 12 31 2020. Do I have a nomination, please? Yes. I'd like to um, reappoint Yvonne Wollenberg. M a motion made by Councilor Mangini, seconded by Councilor Crisati. Do I have a motion to close nominations? Mm -hmm. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. All those in favor of closing nominations? Those opposed? Ten in favor, zero against. Uh, any other further discussion on the main motion? Here on roll call, please. Councilor Unger. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor, Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Yvonne Wollenberg. Councilor Muller. Four. <clears throat> Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sopraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Yvonne Wallenberg. Ten in favor, none against, against to no abstention. Thank you, Sheila. Item five, planning and zoning alternate. A uh, 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 vacancy existed, but a, res a resignation. Uh, do I have a replacement, please? Yeah, I uh, nominate uh, Nel uh, Nelson Correa. Nomination made. Second. Seconded by Councilor Muller. We have a motion to close, nominated by Deputy Mayor Suzak, Second. seconded by Councilor Ungar. All those in favor of closing nominations by a show of hands. Opposed, abstention. Ten in favor, zero against of closing nominations. Any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Nelson Correa. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sofraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Susak. Nelson Correa. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item E under miscellaneous. Discussion resolution requested transfer funds for Public Works Department to purchase a vehicle for EMS of $57,345. Resolve in accordance with Chapter 6, Section AF of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. Two vehicles, light, medium vehicle replacement, $57,345 from the freshwater pond, other equipment of $50,000, and CIP revenue 2015, auction proceeds of $7,345. Uh, certified that the above funds are available as of May 17, 2021, by John Wilcox, a director of finance, and approved by our town manager, Chris Bromson. So moved. By Councillor Muller, seconded by uh, Councillor Riley. Uh, so good news, bad news, real good news that we're able to purchase a new vehicle. But uh, of course, we had to take it from the. But we're not giving up on the. I mean, I should say, I speaking for myself. I haven't temporary, given up on a temporary on the, setback. Yeah, I haven't given up on the paddle boats. So I don't know if anything. Oh, uh, we have a cover, cover memo, and if there are any questions, Kasha um, is prepared to answer them. Kasha, any uh, welcome? Any comments you'd just like to make? Uh, I can either. Uh, no, no, this, this is just a replacement of the EMS. Yeah, maybe, uh, our place is um, and there's you know, rust and just a lot of issues with the vehicle that is now worth repairing at this point. Okay, any questions for Kasha or Chris? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. 
Councilor Ungar? Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Cassati? Four. Councilor Hamler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Sopraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. And in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item F, discussion resolution request to, uh, to request reverse fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation for Edgar Parkman School Splash Pad of 100000 Resolved in the courts of Chapter 6, Section AF of the Town Charter, the following transfers hereby made. Uh, general fund from, general fund unallocated transfers, 100, 100 uh, and... Um, and splash pad construction service, 100,000 to general fund revenue appropriated fund balance, CIP fund revenue fiscal year 21-22 general fund transfers in of 100,000. Certified the above funds are available as of May 11, 2021 by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, and approved by our Town Manager, Chris Brown. So moved. So moved. By Councilor Mangini, seconded by Councilor Muller. Just for the record, make sure people realize we're not, we still are funding the splash pad. Right, we funded it, it was in the budget, but we wanted to get a jump on it um, to hopefully get it done for this year. So we approved it before the budget or the same evening. Now John is just uh, uh, making the books even so that we're now funding it in the budget and he's calling it a reverse, um, whatever terminology he put in here, but we're just making it clear that it will be funded now out of the budget uh, and by the taxes. I'll have to tell you, um, we tried to get a jump on it. We had one vendor that's on the state bid, so we didn't have to go out to, con to go out to bid because that takes six, seven, eight weeks to get people to bid on it, and then you go from there. Uh, the first state uh, bidder, uh, uh, Mr. Noons, had a switch um, for various reasons. We're now working on the second state bid or the last one on the state bid, having a little difficulties and delays with them. So we're trying to work with them. They gave a uh, uh, design today that we're looking at. I'm going to share it with the council uh, for your input. It may be that we're just simply going to have to go out to bid if we're not satisfied with this one. I don't want to rush and not get the product that we all want to be proud of out there. So um, I'll share that design with you tomorrow, and we can talk in leadership and decide whether we want to try to uh, fine-tune this one or just go out to bid and, and, and get a new uh, set of eyes on it. We may have to do that, unfortunately. Any questions for the town manager? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Unger? Four. Councilor Bosco? Joey? <clears throat> Councilor Cassati? Four. Councilor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Sopraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Sousa? Four. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item G under miscellaneous. Discussion resolution request to revert a reverse fiscal year 2020 budget appropriation for Higgins Park Playscape of $200,000. Resolve, resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section AF, the Town Charter. The following transfer is hereby made from General Fund Unallocated Transfer and Capital and Higgins Park Playscape Construction Services at $200,000 to General Fund Revenue Appropriated Fund Balance. CIP fund revenue fiscal year 21 22 general fund transfers at 200,000. Certified the above funds are available as of May 11, 2021, by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, and approved by our Town Manager, Chris Bromson. So moved. So, okay. Moved by Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor um, Riley. This is the same technical explanation. It's in the budget. We approved it early so we could go out early. Fortunately, with this one, we got a beautiful design, and it's engineered. It's been ordered. The PO has been issued. So hopefully, six to eight weeks, this should be complete at the Higgins Park. So this one, hopefully, will be successful. So far, so good. Any questions for the town manager? Hearing on roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor, Councilor Bosco. Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisati? Four. Councilor Hamler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Sopraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. And in favor, none against, and no abstention. Thank you, Sheila. Item H under miscellaneous discussion resolution request to transfer funds for the police department of $50,725. 
resolved in accordance with the chapter six section f of the town charter the following transfers hereby made two police services overtime and medic overtime and medicare fifty thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars from the general fund appropriated fund balance of fifty thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars Certified the above funds are available as of May 12, 2021, by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, and approved by our Town Manager, Chris Bromson. So moved. By second. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Riley. Uh, this, Mr. Mayor, uh, as the Council is well aware, um, one, two buildings to our north, 800 Enfield Street. The Council, we had uh, leased this uh, for the purposes of the drive through tellers to be able to have uh, our residents get their dog license and pay taxes and other simple business there during COVID. Well, we then entered into a two year contract with the option to purchase it. It's worked out very well as part of the, as of the council's previously approved building consolidation. I can report to you on budget and on schedule. The tax and assessor's offices have been moved to 800 Enfield Street. But in addition, uh, because the building was so large, there was space in the back. And in conversations with the council and the police department, um, we know that the LaMagna building um, will also, as part of the consolidation, be empty uh, by the end of this summer, probably, where recreation use services will be consolidated at the Alcorn. Part of that building in the front was used as a police substation. Um, so we didn't want to wait and the council instructed us to find a new location. Um, fortunately, we looked at the Enfield uh, Express uh, at 800 Enfield Street. It had the space there, and for very, very little uh, expense, we were able to, in a very short time, retrofit it to add uh, uh, and market on Enfield Street. The council took a tour this evening, so it will be operational immediately. Um, and this funding is to have four shifts a week to begin with. We have future plans we'll discuss at our next meeting, but to have one, uh, one four-hour shift a day, four days a week, where we'll have community police officers. Um, this will be in addition to the regular patrols in Thompsonville who will be uh, working out of the Express to go into Thompsonville to walk, to get to know the businesses and our residents, and also be present at our new park and the other amenities we're putting in behind, behind Town Hall. That will start immediately. This is the funding to do so. I think it's a step in the right direction, and uh, I thank the Council for their vision in wanting to expand this and do it right away, uh, do it for the summer. And in addition, this is uh, not going to replace the Thompsonville walking patrols. There's $75,000 July 1st available for those patrols in addition to the regular patrols. And this is the third layer on top of that. So there's a commitment to the downtown and to make sure that we have a very safe, peaceful um, downtown in all of Thompsonville for our residents to enjoy. So this is the first step and we'll have another phase uh, for council's consideration at the next meeting for a more permanent solution for the substation. Thank you, sir. Any questions for the town manager? And again, only thing I'll say is that, again, it's, this is how the manager council form of government works. Staff makes a recommendation because I hear what's, uh, what the debate is with the council. They make a, their expertise. They make a recommendation. We, we hear the recommendation. You implement it and, it, and it can sometimes happen quickly with government. And I think that's – people don't realize how quickly your staff – you know, Donald, who's coming off, you know, some and, you know, again, uh, and, and chief and his staff. I mean, this is what less than two weeks. So I, government can be lightning quick when it wants to be. Right. Well, I think it began, yeah. uh, you know, the vision of the council to see that building was in a great position. We're going to be using it for additional parking when we purchase it for the park and for Santa Dalberts. I had a meeting today, Santa Dalberts, you've already funded the, per the purchase of it, the renovation for 9,000 square feet for indoor basketball, pickleball volleyball, a, a um, climbing wall, a stage to do presentations. It will also be the site and we'll, we'll have a, a booth at the Enfield Market during the summer um, to promote as one of the three referendums, the R's, roofs, roads and recreation, a 25 meter pool and a splash pad for there. So it's going to be quite an amazing complex. And it was the vision of the council almost 18 months ago to say Enfield Express had this great potential. And because you believed in it, we were able to make it part of consolidation. And then in, in as you say, Mr. Mayor, in two weeks, because of the hard work of the police department and public works, um, Kosh in my office, the town attorney, uh, everybody working together with the owners of the building. We were able to do that in two weeks and get a police presence there. It's pretty amazing. And it's a very, very excellent position, a very good place to have it. And because we had the building, oh, we were able to do it that quickly. So I agree with you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if everybody's working together, uh, rowing in the right direction together, you can get a lot done and pretty quickly. Thank you, sir. 
Any other questions or comments? Uh, hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Unger? Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Crisotti? Four. Councilor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Spraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Souza? Four. And in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Moving on to item I, discussion resolution request of, uh, re sorry, request to designate low SIP grant funds for fiscal year 2020. Uh, nope, excuse me. Yes. Uh, request to tr designate low SIP grant funds for fiscal year 2020 22 budget. Um, resolve that. Let me make sure I have the right resolution. Sorry. Yep. I think I. So I do. Okay, sorry. Resolve that the town council of the town of Enfield does hereby appropriate low SIP grant funds in the amount of three hundred twenty thousand for the following purpose in accordance with twenty the twenty one twenty two annual operating and capital budget. Orlando Drive Culvert three hundred twenty thousand prepared on the, uh, May twelfth twenty twenty one by our town manager and our director of finance. So moved by Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Crisati. Yeah, you know, uh, this is really good news. I mean, I know. When you talk about culverts, it may not be the most exciting thing in the world, but this is good news. Well, it was uh, basically spurred by an emergency right. a couple, a couple yeah. of years back where we had erosion and exposed uh, actually sewage pipes, and we had to go out there and, and address it. That was part of it. But additionally, there's been an outstanding the culvert under Orlando, which is in risk of failing and collapsing and actually limiting uh, access to all those apartments and condos. We need to address it. Um, we are going to do it here. This was all contained in the budget. Um, John is balancing low SIP funds. Um, we always each year have level funding for the cemeteries and celebrations accounts. We forwarded a, uh, a list of that breakdown to the council. So this is just, again, uh, correcting the books and the budget. The funding was there, but this is just uh, appropriating it to the various accounts, um, which had not been done in the official budget. But it, it's, it's revenue neutral. It's funding that we had in the budget coming in, and it's going to those items which we had designated in the budget uh, to be spent. Councilor Mangini, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Through our mayor, I'd like to address this to our town manager, if I may. Chris, if you would just clarify for me, because I'm not wrapping myself around it. The 320 is for the uh, project, Orlando Drive Culvert, correct? The total amount, yes. Okay. Where I'm confused, and I just want you to clarify, please. I'll have John clarify okay, it because, as you say, it's a little bit, it gets in the weeds okay. with accounting, but John is prepared to answer. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, John, if you wouldn't mind just clarifying, <clears throat> we've got the 320, and, and Chris did say, you know, we level fund the cemetery, historical, the uh, NLC, celebrations. Um, those, those amounts, I'm I didn't do the math, but I don't think they total the 320. But are we taking money away from those accounts, or is the 320 um, in addition to those accounts? John, uh, welcome, our Director of Finance, John Wilcox. Did you hear that question, John? Yes, yes I, did. I did. Go ahead, sir. Um, so <laughs> in our original, original budget, budget, every, every year, year the uh, state, state requires, requires uh, it, 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 one of, One of the, the state, state uh, uh, revenue sources, sources for towns is the local capital improvement program. program. Um, and they, we, get we get around $320,000 every, every year with that. that. Um, so, so typically in the past, um, we had been designating the Roads 2015 project as the project to which we would fund with that money. We have to tell the state what we're going to fund with it. Um, we had a little bit uncertainty about the amount this year, so we did not do that in the original budget. And so when we decided up the that the Orlando Drive project could be used for that, um, now we are appropriating the revenue for that, and we are adding the money to those other accounts. Uh, so we are we are increasing the expenditure budget for the celebrations and special events. Uh, for the Cemetery Association, for the Historical Society, and the National League of Cities. 
Um, and we would then be putting the money, reducing the amount of fund balance that we're using for the rest of it. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. 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 And we're all talking about Jay. Well, oh, I know. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, the, that resolution, Councilor Mangino, actually is J. It's an X one, just so, yeah, for the record. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. You know, and I just think too. I don't. I know again. With the council, uh, Councilor Bosco was there. I, when that when that culvert collapsed a few years ago, I mean, this is just, like I said. It's this. It's not the most exciting stuff in the world, but the staff again, the creativity of a. We were initially kind of, you know, keeping it from getting worse than it was. I guess is the best way of saying it. And then, and then the commitment to fund it over from the council, then getting using LOSIP is really a good answer for what could have been a pretty, pretty, even worse situation than it was in, you know, when it simply collapsed because of all that rain we had. And uh, again, like I said, uh, our, our folks did a really good job. So I'll, I'll defer to Councilor uh, Bosco. Well, it's great to see it finally done. I mean, really, this is one of the, this culvert was on our list when I first got put on. You know, and uh, when we, we when that when that sewer pipe broke, we went and we inspected it, and uh, Donald showed, and it it was bad. So I'm I'm glad it's finally getting done. Yeah, great, one of those projects that we've been meaning to do, and again, staff stayed on it, and it's great to see that it's going to get done. I agree with Councilor Bonsero. Any, anything? Any other questions? Hearing none. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. anything else, John? Before we go to roll call. Sorry, I want to make sure. He's good. Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Unger. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ledwick. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Surprise. Four. Deputy Mayor Souza. Four. It's 10, 10 in favor, favor, none against, against and no abstention. abstention. Thank you, Sheila. Item J, discussion resolution, request to transfer a fund for the low SIP revenue of 320000 Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section AF of the Town Charter, Charter, the following transfers, the following transfers hereby made. From general fund un unallocated transfers to capital of 320000 From CIP revenue fiscal year 21-22, State of Connecticut low SIP. To Enfield Cemetery Association of 39000 Enfield Historical Society, miscellaneous expenditures of 17800 National League of Cities, 3900 Celebration and Events, 6500 General Fund Appropriate Revenue, 194300 And CIP Fund Revenue Fiscal Year 21-22 General Fund Transfers in of 320000 Certified but the above funds are available as of May 11, 2021 by our Director of Finance, Jen Wilcox. Approved by our Town Manager, Chris Prompson. So moved. By Councilor Muller. Second by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Councilor Mangini's question actually is more appropriate for this, but I, I think it was, you know, just want to make sure you have, you have any other further questions? I got nothing. Any other questions from anyone else on the town council? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Surprise. Four. Deputy Mayor Souza. Four. It's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item K, discussion resolution, re resolution authorizing the town manager to sign easements, declaration of covenants, and direct declaration of preservation restrictions. Whereas the Hazardville Institute Conservancy, Conservancy Society, Inc. currently has a 99-year lease agreement with the Hazville Institute with the town of Enfield. Whereas the Hazville Institute Conservancy Society, Inc. recently received a historic resolution restoration fund grant from the state of Connecticut's Department of Economic and Community Development to assist in the rehabilitation of Hasville Institute. Whereas as the condition of the grant, the owner agrees that it will execute and file on the land records of Enfield and easements, declaration of covenants, and a direct declaration of preservation restric restrictions for a term of 15 years. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council authorized the town manager to sign the easements, declaration of covenants, and a declaration of preservation restrictions prepared by Nelson Teresio, our the Deputy Director of Economic Community Development on May 6, 2021. So moved. By Councilor Muller. Second. Seconded by Councilor Riley. 
I think the resolution explains it, but Nelson and Kasha are available to answer any questions. Uh, welcome, Nelson and Kasha. I don't know, either one of you have the floor if you just want to highlight anything. Two for one. Sure. Um, good evening, Town Council. Um, as you mentioned, the Hazardville Institute Conservancy, Conservancy Society, with the help of my office, they received a $100,000 matching grant from the State's Historic Preservation Office this past year. The grant's being used, uh, it's going to be used to reimburse the um, Hazardville Institute Conservancy Society on this next phase of uh, rehabilitation work, and that mainly consists of energy efficiency improvements and utility upgrades to the facility. Um, under the um, terms of this agreement, the Institute Conservative Society will continue to assume uh, the continued maintenance of the property and preserve and maintain the historical and architectural qualities of the building for the next uh, 15 years. The town needs to be a party to the agreement because we are the owner of the property. Well said, sir. Kasha, just want to make sure you have anything. Yep. Any questions for Nelson or Nelson or Kasha? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Ungar. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisotti. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Susprazza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. And in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item L under discussion under miscellaneous discussion resolution resolution entering a letter entering into a letter of intent with the Connecticut Green Bank. Whereas Connecticut Green Bank, a Connecticut quasi-public state agency, has conducted site visits to various facilities in the town of Enfield. Whereas Green Bank has provided the town with a letter of intent to negotiate in good faith over a period of 360 days to reach an agreement for solar photo, oh God, photo volatilic okay. systems. Okay. Uh, what I, you heard, volatilic <laughs> systems on a, on a client premises and Whereas the letter of intent does not constitute a legal or binding agreement between the parties. And whereas the town of Enfield may terminate negotiations for any reason or no reason by notifying the general bank in writing, excuse me, the green bank in writing. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council does authorize the town manager to sign a letter of intent with Connecticut Green Bank to pursuant to the review of the pursuant to the review of the town attorney submitted by Castro Purcello, our direct our assistant town manager on May 6, 2021. So moved by Councillor Muller, okay. seconded by Councillor Riley. Kasha, welcome back. Um, I know you've worked hard on this, so you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. So good evening again. Um, so as uh, the resolution said, this is uh, allowing the town manager to sign a letter of intent with Connecticut Green Bank. Again, this is not a legal agreement. It's not the contract. Um, over the past uh, few months, really, we've been working with Green Bank. They came out um, working with DPW to go to various uh, sites around town. Uh, to really look at roofs and, you know, where they could put uh, solar panels on the roof. Um, so this allows them, at this point, uh, they would have to uh, go forward with new projects and enter into Eversource's ZREC program. So they kind of submit proposed projects by mid-June and see if Eversource will give them incentives uh, to do our project. Uh, so the timeline for the actual contract wouldn't be until the late fall winter of this year. This just lets us explore uh, the projects and to see, um, you know, keep working with them really and to see if this is something that would make sense for the town. Thank you, Kasha. Any questions for Kasha from the Councillor Bosco? I probably would be one of the lone wolves on this. I do not believe in drilling any holes in a brand new roof. I know we have warranties. I know they have contracts, but businesses go out of business. These these green banks and, and, and a lot of these different businesses that grab all their money up front end up, they go out of business. We have no warranty. They can say that there's a warranty. They can send you a contract. But when the company's defunct, 20 years from now, 20 years is a long time. Town of Enfield's holding their finger in the hole that they just drilled in the, the roof. And um, I just, I, I, I personally think that to uh, have someone else warrant something for 20 years. I mean, we have people going out of business that been in business for 100 years. And then we're going to be the ones that are going to be uh, on the hook 
for all these holes and removing the solar panels and all the guarantees in the world don't do nothing when someone goes bankrupt. So I probably will be the lone wolf on this one, and I will vote against it. And uh, I just I, I just tell everyone, think, 20 years is a long time. There's no guarantee we're going breathe to be breathing tomorrow. And if someone goes out of business or goes bankrupt, you're 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 putting your kids' future on fixing that roof. Uh, thank you, Councilor Bob Kasha. I don't know if you want to respond or. I would just say, Kasha said, this isn't the contract to enter into it. If everybody felt that even ultimately for that reason we weren't going to do it, then I would say let's not bother. But I think we're really not at the bridge yet. This is just to explore it, to see if Eversource is interested. And then I think those questions that Councillor Bosco, uh, as he often has, very insightful, pragmatic, common sense questions need to be answered before we do sign on the dotted line to let anybody put these on new roofs. So I think I, I'm glad he's alerted us to that. I would recommend we go forward. We're not committing at this point just to see if we're eligible. It's a worthy cause. And then if we are eligible and they have contracts, we come back. And unless they can allay the concerns of Mr. Bosco at that time, perhaps he's right. We don't enter into the contract if we're going to buy a pig and a poke. But at this point, I think I would say let's do it and look at it, and then we'll come back and make sure that they can give us a real warranty that's worth the paper it's printed on. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Um, Bank is more than interested in uh, coming in to present the council. Uh, okay, good. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Enfield High School roof was supposed to be ready, uh, ready for solar. It was supposed to be done so that it could. I know Matt Coppler was very upset that there was no renewable energy on that project at all. It was really a sore spot for him, you know, as a town manager. Um, I think there's a big deal to lower your carbon footprint. Do I think that solar is, you know, the end all be all in New England? No. But I think we need to have a presence in it. I think we need to look at it. I think we need to be open-minded. I mean, we got businesses in town now that are probably running their whole business with solar. So, you know, I think that we, we've opened the door. We need to look inside there. We have asked them to look at ground-mounted, which I think I'm always more in favor of, but it is much more expensive, and you don't necessarily get the payback. What the ground mounteds do for you is if you're looking for canopy situations, you solve two birds with one stone. You're going to get your lower carbon footprint. I mean, we're all looking at, you know, this train that's going in. I mean, all of us that took the time to go over to, you know, to speak with Mr. Triano, you know, the, the end thing in that game is the, the federal government is spending probably billions of dollars so that What's produced is a wash, but when you burn it in your furnace and you burn it in a car, you lower your carbon footprint. And I guess that this is maybe the thing we all need to look at is not how much money you save and not how much you do, but if you can wash on money and you can lower your carbon footprint, you are doing something for the future. And I'll get off my soapbox. Oh, so and Joe's already has this over at Asnantec, so he's the look, expert. I, I don't believe they drill into the roof. I believe it's like patio blocks or something holding them in, and then they conduit over the side. Uh, heavy, heavy-duty ones, but I, I want to look and get more information. But we have it there with Connecticut Green Bank and the solar canopy as well. Akash, also, there was we did we had a presentation. I think it was back in December, right? That September. The, oh, I'm sorry, September. That's on the manager's website. If people want to know anything about the green banks, we do have a presentation on the town manager's website. So, and again, this is not a binding agreement. If they want to come back and actually recommend buildings, we will have another presentation before the town council. Oh, we do have buildings. Uh, no, I'm saying when they want. Costa made made the point. I know we have buildings, but when they want to come and recommend buildings, we'll have a presentation before the council. But there is a there is something out there for people to go look at. Any other questions? Here and roll call, please. Councilor Unger. Four. Councilor Bosco. Against. Councilor Cassati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Suprasa. Against. Deputy Mayor Suzak. 
four. That's eight in favor, two against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item M. M, discussion resolution, a resolution referring referring the proposed improvements of land located at 165 Weymouth Road, known as Edgar H. Parkman School, to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Whereas the town of Enfield owns a property located at 165 Weymouth Road, the Eng, also known as the Edgar H. Parkman School, and whereas the town council has adopted resolution 5759, funding the construction of a splash pad on the premises of Parkman School, whereas the Enfield Town Council must refer this proposed improvement to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance to the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the proposed improvement listed above is referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24, prepared by our town manager's office on April 27, 2021. So moved. So moved. By Councilor Mangini, seconded by Councilor Muller. This is just uh, This yeah. is the 8-24 uh, referral to the Planning and Zoning in regard to the splash pad at the school and its location. I'd like to thank them in advance. We've been sending them a lot of work with town projects and we appreciate um, them taking the time to review them and giving us their input. And the same will be, and will be just for the uh, playscape, so the same Correct. exact resolution. Any questions on the, the, either resolution? Hearing none, roll call please, Sheila. Councilor Under. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Crisati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor, Mayor Ludwig? Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Sopraza? Four. Deputy, Deputy Mayor Souza? Four. It's 10, ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item N, discu discussion resolution, resolution referring to proposed the redevelopment of land located at 820 Enfield Street to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Whereas the town of Enfield, also known as the town, owns the property located at 820 Enfield Street. And whereas the town intends to construct a new full-size outdoor basketball court, and whereas the town intends to construct a new playground, and whereas the town intends to construct a new walking path along the perimeter of Higgins Park, Whereas the town council, Enfield Town Council, must refer these proposed this proposed improvement to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the proposed improvement listed above is referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 824, 8-24, the prepared by the town manager's office on April 27, 2021. So moved. Second. By Councilor Muller. Second. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. Again, there is no question. Same exact resolutions before. Sheila, roll call, please. Councilor Under. Four. Councilor, Councilor Bosco. Bosco. Four. Councilor Cassati. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Sopraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Souza. Four. Ten in favor, none against, against and no abstentions. abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item 16, public communications. Again, uh, there are none. I item 17, councilor communications. Any councilor have any communications? Um, if I might, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mayor, I would just like to acknowledge uh, Councillor Muller had a very good update and presentation under special reports for the JFK. Um, but I think um, it merits a more uh, lengthy presentation. I'm going to be meeting with the chairman, Mr. Daigle, um, this week, and I think it merits because of the progress and, and the work that Mr. Muller put into it to have a special presentation uh, at that time. So he graciously agreed to not give the report tonight, and we'll have a, a full report and a half hour probably presentation with a slideshow that Mr. Muller um, has already been working very hard on. So I thank him for his patience. Thank and you. And hopefully in the next meeting or so, uh, we'll have that down to update the entire council. But I thought it was more appropriate given the progress and the scope of it to do it in a formal manner as a special report um, at, with special guests due to the, the, the significance of the project. Yep. Anyone else have any communications or comments? Again, hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? So by Councilor second. Uh, Ungar, second by Councilor Mangini. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Good night, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you.